All right, Jane Coley, five five. Um, universal gravitation is what this is going to be about. So Newton's law of universal gravitation. If the, if the force of gravity is being exerted on objects on the Earth, what is the origin of that force? Okay, and uh, Newton realized that the force must come from the Earth. So Earth is the force of the gravity that we first encountered, right? He further realized that this force must be what keeps the moon in its orbit around the Earth, right? So everything goes towards down or towards the center of the Earth. So the gravitational force on you is one half of a third law pair. So the Earth exerts a downward force on you, and you exert an upward force on the Earth. Okay, when there's such a disparity in, ma in masses, the reaction force is undetectable. But for bodies more equal in mass, it is much more significant. So when we look at the Earth and the Moon, you can see this gravitational force is a little bit greater than the one of us on the Earth. But it's equal and opposite. So the same force the Earth we exert, the Earth exerts on us, we exert on the Earth. So the Earth has a lot of forces acting on it, but it also has exerts a lot of force on a lot of other objects. So it's a net zero, right, when we talk about forces because of the third law. And again, with the Moon and the Earth, the force of the Moon on the Earth is the same as the force of the Earth and the Moon. So gravitational force must be proportional to masses. So by looking at orbits, Newton also concluded that the gravitational force must decrease as the distance decreases. And in fact, it turned out to be a square or inverse square of the distance between the masses. And, and, and you can read about this stuff um, online if you'd like, I just, or you can just take my word for it. Um, but his data is out there. Um, but in its final form, this is the law. And this is the equation, and this is what we're going to be working with. Force of gravity is equal to g, which is a constant, so it's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, times mass of 1, mass of 2, so the mass of our two objects, divided by r, which is not a radius, instead it's the distance, right? It's the distance between the two objects squared, all right? And I do, I do a couple of examples here in a little bit, but this, that's the equation we're working with. So the magnitude of g is from, is from Henry Cavendish, who did an experiment, and uh, he looked at, at how bouncing light off of a mirror and hitting the scale, how rod, two rods or two, two balls would attract that were hanging by a rod off of, off of a string. All right, and you can read, again, this is something that you can read about. Cavendish's experiment's pretty famous, so again, a Google search will get you there. But the big thing is that from his experiment, that's where... Um, that's where, go back, this constant comes from. Most calculators have this constant, if not, write it down. Um, but this is Cavendish's constant, big G, and, it, and it's in the universal law of gravitation. All right, so we're going to do example 5-9 first. Can you attract another person gravitationally? A 50-kilogram person and a 70-kilogram person are sitting on a bench close to each other. Estimate the magnitude of the gravitational force each exerts on the other. Do it now. Okay, so... It says estimate, but I'm going to just go ahead and do the whole thing. For example, 5'9". Can, can you attract another person gravitationally? So I've got a 50 kilogram and a 70 kilogram person is sitting on a bench close to each other. We'll say inside of six feet, right? What's the magnitude of the gravitational force that exerts on one another? So one, we got to come up with the distance. So we'll say, we'll say what? Two meters, maybe. So we got, we got our 70 kilogram person here. And our and our fifty or yeah fifty kilogram person here, um, the distance between them we'll say is two meters, and we want to find the gravitational force. So we go to the equation. Force of gravity is equal to the constant, which um, Cavendish's constant, right? Times the two masses. So seventy and fifty, they both have to be in kilograms, which they are, divided by radius squared which is two meters so two squared and that's that simple now look at the and look at the answer we're going to get for this because that is it's interesting 6.67 e negative 11 times 70 times 50 divided by 4 and this number is really really small 5.8 times 10 to the 3 6 7 8 times 10 negative 8 newtons, right? 5.8 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons. And
And um, this is a really small number. That's like the force of gravity. But think about the force of gravity on just from the Earth on these two items, right? So if I take 70 times 9.8, right? And I'm just going to approximate because I don't want to calculate that. But 70 times 10, about 750 times 9.8. Again, I'm going to approximate that to be 500. So the, the force of gravity on these two people from the Earth is 700 and 500 newtons. The force of attraction between the two people is this, way smaller. That's why we don't feel that force, right? That's why my computer's right there and my hands right here, or, this, or the iPad's right there and my hands right here. There's a force of attraction. But the Earth's so much stronger that this is irrelevant. This, th they won't come towards each other, okay? Now, if we were outside of the Earth and outside of other forces of gravity, which I don't know where you'll find that at, but if we were, then these two objects would have an attraction and would probably do this. But because the Earth's so big and because the force of our weight is so much bigger than the force of attraction between the two objects, we don't see it. Now, it says um, that each exerts on each other. Well, it doesn't matter. This and this, the 70 on the 50 is this, and the 50 on the 70 is this equal and opposite. So, I mean, we could say plus minus, right? plus being to the left or to the right and then minus being to the left. But in the end, that, that's, that's the gravitational force. Spacecraft at two Earth radii. So what is the force of gravity acting on a 2,000 kilogram spacecraft when it orbits two Earth radii from the Earth's center? That is a distance, so RE is 6380 kilometers, okay? The mass of the Earth is this number here. So 2RE would be this times 2, and then this is 1RE. This is the radius of the Earth is just one of these. And we'll talk about that as we do the problem. Do it now. All right, so here's the, here's the problem and what it looks like. Um, we got the Earth, which starts in the center. That's one Earth radius, right, from the center to the surface. And then the other Earth radius is from the surface to where the satellite's located. Um, I think the Earth radius is 6380 Kilometers. Let me check that number that they gave you because I don't want to fib to you. Yeah, 6380 kilometers is one Earth radius, but there's two here, right? So if I take 6380 times two, that will tell me that I'm 12,760 kilometers away from the center of the Earth, okay? so. And there's the orbit that it goes around. And we want to find the force of gravity. So Fg equals my constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, multiplied by my masses, mass of the Earth, big number, mass of the satellite, not as big, divided by the distance. Now I want it in meters, so I'm going to. force of gravity on this is, I'm just going to round it to 4,900 newtons. So the force that the um, Earth has in the satellite is also um, the same that the satellite has on the Earth, which is 4,900 newtons, which is um, quite a bit more than a, an average person weighs, about seven times uh, the average weight of a person. But still, that's for that distance, that's, that's quite a bit of force, right? Um, well, not a lot of force. So what we can do with this number is other things. Let's say we want to see how fast the satellite's going in velocity-wise, right? Since it's going in a circle, the force holding it inward, the centripetal force, would be my gravitational force. So my, my force is 4,900. The mass of my satellite is 2,000. My V squared is what I'm going to solve for, and my radius um, is going to be this number, right? 760, but not squared, and solve it for V. So 4,900 times 12, 760, three zeros. So 
divided by 2,000. And we get a velocity of 5,600 meters per second. It's rounded. But that's how fast this thing's traveling. Now you're like, man, that's, 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 that's really fast. Well, it is really fast, but think about the distance here, right? It's going around. Its circumference, right? It's going to be, so our distance around is going to be 2 pi r. So 2 pi times this number, right? 12, 760. 2 shift pi, or 2 pi times 12, 760. That's my circumference. If I divide that by my speed, it takes 14,000 seconds to make it full, uh, full move around. So let's 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 uh, divide that by 3,600, and that tells me how many hours. So it makes it it makes it around about every four hours. It makes it around the Earth and going at that speed. So a lot of things we can do once we find that force of gravity. We can go back on to some of the circular motion that we talked about, and you'll probably be asked to do that at some point.